Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30 in the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii. We focus our guests and, and our, I guess, theme of the show is about success stories in Hawaii. Uh, we talk about you know, how companies have made it work here. Uh, we've heard about all the challenges. It's not easy uh, and we do have issues. But there are companies that are successful, they make it work, uh, and we want to learn their secrets and, and what they've done uh, to get over these challenges or work around these challenges. So today I have Sanji Michigadani, who is the Managing Director of Talent HR Solutions. Uh, it's a PEO, and we'll explain what that is in a minute. But it's a very competitive industry. There's some big players, uh, they're very aggressive. Um, but there are some companies that have made it work here and they've done a good job. And Sanji is one of those people. Uh, welcome to the show, Sanji. It's good to have you here. Thank you, you too. Um, now you've been in Hawaii for a little while. Can you give us just a little bit of a background on uh, how you got here and, and what you've been doing for the last uh, 10, 15 years? Sure, um, I'm a local boy, uh, born and raised here in Hawaii. I graduated from Kalani High School. Kalani High School, yeah. okay, good. Yeah. And, uh, after high school, I wanted to go to college on the mainland, so I ended up going to Southern Oregon uh, College in Ashland, Oregon. Wow, that's yeah. cold country. Very cold, yeah. Yep. But also I've heard very beautiful. It's got some good mountains, and there's, uh, they actually have some beaches too, don't they? Uh, yeah, uh, actually the beaches we call uh, lakes. Lakes, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, after uh, Oregon, um, but what did oh, you major in? Did you, you know, you finished school there? Or did you finish school somewhere else? Uh, I finished school in uh, in Oregon. So I, I did my undergraduate there, and I uh, earned my degree in general business management. Ah, good. Yeah. All right, that's good. Good experience to have. Good education to have mm -hmm. to get into business. <laughs> All right, and then uh, did you come back to Hawaii right after that, or did you stay on the mainland a little while? Uh, actually, um, after I graduated, it was so interesting. Um, back then, we didn't have Google. Uh, there was Yahoo. I remember sitting in our computer lab, and I wanted to, uh, I didn't want to come back to Hawaii. I wanted to uh, go somewhere where uh, it had warm weather. So I, <laughs> I, I, I put in warm weather, tropical climate, and San Diego, California showed up. So I was like, wow, this is, this is where I'm going to go. You know, I have actually heard, and you can confirm this, mm -hmm. but um, San Diego probably has some of the most predictable weather in the world. Their variation mm -hmm. in temperature during the year is one of the most narrowest in the country. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yep, that is true. Yeah, yep. it's an amazing place. And, and you were there for a while? I was there for almost seven years. Wow. Um, and what, what did you do there? So when I first relocated there, my initial... Um, career goal was to be into to, to get into retail management, and uh, the economy was just turning then, and I was turning for the better. Turning for the better, yeah. It took me a, it took me a while to find uh, a job, and I the first job I took it was interesting. It was uh, selling boots. Boots. Yeah. Okay. At Boot World. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the name of the store. Yes. Boot World. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you're an expert on boots. Yeah. <laughs> just for three months. <laughs> And um, prior to that, I, I was rapid firing resumes to, you know, at that time it was, the, you know, as I said, the economy was turning, so I, I was just trying to get anything I could. And um, a company called me, and one of the first things they said was, Do you want to get paid for helping somebody find a job? And I was like, This is mm. pretty interesting because here I am finding, I'm trying to look for a job, and they're asking me if I want to get paid. So I said, Yes. <laughs> So they got you hooked. You got me hooked. Yep. And then uh, what? You went in there. Well, can you tell us the name of the company? Yeah. So the name of the company. Well, the name of the company was called Aerotech. Okay. Uh, very good company. They had one of the best uh, training for like recruiting. So basically, Aerotech was a, a large national uh, employment mm -hmm. agency. Did so, they specialize in anything in particular? Uh, they covered everything from you know administrative to medical to wow. defense. It was just. Very broad. Well, San Diego is yeah. definitely a place for defense. Yep. Yeah, as is Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And you were there for how long? I was there for uh, about two years at Aerotech. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but you were in San Diego for 
about seven, seven years. years. Yeah. And so, yeah. did you do something after Aerotech? Or? Yeah. So after um, Aerotech, I, I uh, the as you know the dot com uh, mm. the dot coms were happening then. So um, you know there was an opportunity to work for a technology solutions provider, and I was uh, hired as a recruiter. So, well, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So you switched uh, right over into recruiting in a corporate world. Yep. And how long did you do that? I was there for about three and a half to four years. Wow. Yeah. That's a good yeah. experience. There. Very good. Yeah, it was fun. And so, what brought you back to Hawaii? So, what brought me back to Hawaii was um, I used I used to be an avid swing dancer in San Diego. Really? Yeah. Wow. And uh, like a lot of people think that I don't swing. I I. I I only dance with my wife at home, but um, on a, uh, while I was on vacation, I um, I met somebody and um, I ended up, uh, you know, I, I asked my, my current boss, I had a remote job back then, and they were able to uh, let me work remotely from Hawaii. So wow, nice. That was, that was pretty neat. So you were able to stay in this corporate HR type of role, mm -hmm. even though you weren't there. You you started remote working from Hawaii. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I bet you a lot of people would like to be able to do something like that. Yes. Yep. And so you did that for how long? So I did that for about a year, and because of the time difference, they always gave preference to the recruiters that were in like their time zone. So Hawaii was about two to five hours behind. So they could only keep me busy for about 40 weeks out of the year. So mm -hmm. I was like, wow, you know, I, uh, in Hawaii it's a very expensive place and oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I have to find um, a supplemental income. So I, I started a uh, recruiting company in 2002. Okay, 2002. Yeah. And did you, this recruiting company, did it specialize in anything or? So we started off in retail and it okay. kind of, we branched out to um, other areas like banking, real estate, wow. um, just a, a variety of Some different pretty industries. big industries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. And how long did you do that? So we had the recruiting company for about seven years and uh, we grew pretty quickly. We, we had three locations. Um, we, we grew to San Diego and then also to Las Vegas, but we kept it mm -hmm. boutique. It was about five five people per location. Yeah. Now, was this the kind of the foundation or the core of, of today's talent HR solutions? So it sort of led up to that. So in, in 2007, uh, you recall we had the big financial crisis and... The collapse? Yeah, the collapse. And, <laughs> um, you know, for, for seven years, I thought that this was it. I could make a living placing people and it was, it was fun and we enjoyed um, building relationships with uh, people that were uh, seeking employment, mm -hmm. uh, but um, the financial crisis, unfortunately, it, it wiped out. It changed the, things. Yeah, yeah, the job market got, uh, it, it was damaged severely. So um, that was the time where we were thinking about other businesses. We already had our payroll set up. We had a lot of um, things set up to do uh, HR and payroll. We just mm -hmm. weren't uh, proactively uh, talking to mm. potential clients about it. So. so that was that was actually very lucky of you to have set up some of these different types of uh, operations that mm -hmm. could easily switch into uh, generating some mm -hmm. revenue for mm -hmm. you. So mm -hmm. that wasn't brilliant strategy. Mm -hmm. It was just something that you kind of set up along mm -hmm. the way, and, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden it happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and that's uh, sometimes being lucky can be just as good as being smart. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, a lot of it too is uh, a, a risk too. You know, because I remember in that financial crisis, um, we had rents to pay, and it was just really bad. Uh -huh. So we, you know, it, it got to the point where I was like, I'm all in. I'm going to cash out my 401k. Wow. Uh, pay you know 40 percent taxes or whatnot to to start up uh, our our PEO, which is Talent HR Solutions. See, a lot of people don't realize when owners of companies, small business owners, really have to go all in like that. Mm -hmm. And they take a huge risk mm -hmm. in putting all their chips on the table mm -hmm. to make it work. Mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and sometimes it does work, mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. you know, but that's what small business people are all mm -hmm. about. That's what they do, and, and mm -hmm. you're a good example of that. Mm -hmm. And so you went all in, you set this all up, and, mm -hmm. and then you started kind of reshifting the, the focus of what you were doing mm -hmm. into more of the, the payroll and the HR support. Yeah, and, and uh, after the financial crisis, companies were really trying to economize and, and save money, so the, the outsourced HR uh, benefits, you know, it, it was a good model to uh, help a lot of uh, small companies, small and medium-sized companies, 
to reduce their costs. Right, and that's, that's one of the keys that we're going to try to talk a little bit mm -hmm. about uh, today. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about the firm later, but mm -hmm. one of the reasons why your firm caught on mm -hmm. and is still existing today mm -hmm. is because you really helped that small, mid-sized business um, you know, in, in their back office functions mm -hmm. and their operations, particularly mm -hmm. payroll and HR. Mm -hmm. Can you just explain a little bit what the benefits are? Well, first of all, why don't you explain what a PEO is mm -hmm. for people who don't you know, understand that sure. or haven't heard that term before, mm -hmm. and then why it's so valuable? Okay, so uh, the acronym PEO stands for Professional Employer Organization. Essentially, we are a HR department for hundreds of small companies. Mm -hmm. And so business owners can basically just focus on what they do best. They run their business. For example, a doctor will um, fix a human being, and I will help them with their HR and payroll and process. Uh, right. all of the so you take the headache of all the compliance mm -hmm. issues related to payroll. And yes. if you're a small business, you can appreciate how voluminous that can be. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of payroll issues that have to be dealt with. It's Absolutely. not just writing and signing a mm -hmm. check. I mean, there's a lot more involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you take over that and you do that for these people. Yes. Um, and so you could also offer some benefits uh, to the employees that maybe they mm -hmm. couldn't get mm -hmm. at that employer. Mm -hmm. How does that work? So um, because of our, um, our critical mass, uh, we've been able to um, partner with a lot of different uh, clients and offer lifestyle benefits, um, for example, like gym memberships, credit union benefits, uh, movie theater discounts, the list just goes on and on and on. Um, also, In addition yeah. to the standard health care sure. that they need and the, the workers' comp and the yep. TDI and, and all this stuff, I mean, mm -hmm. everybody's entitled to that. And, and you've got some leverage because you've yep. got so many employees mm -hmm. that you represent. You can actually get some very competitive pricing, maybe even better mm -hmm. than what people can do on their own. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. That's very good. Yep. And for somebody who wanted to take advantage of this, I guess there's... Uh, a website they can go to to find out more information? Yeah, so they can go to talenthrsolutions.com. And okay, and that's all spelt out? Yep. All right, talenthrsolutions.com. Yep. All right, and then once they get there, they can poke around, they can find out uh, some of the different uh, services mm -hmm. that you provide mm -hmm. and, and other information that might mm -hmm. be there. Now, we're coming up on a break, mm -hmm. and so what I'd like to be able to do is uh, go on that break. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll be gone for about 60 seconds. When we come back, I want to dive into the details a little bit more about your firm and the PEO concept mm -hmm. and, and how that model can really benefit some people out there that's got their small and mid-sized businesses. Uh, but this is Reg Baker. Uh, this is the Business in Hawaii show. Uh, we're going to be going on a 60-second break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today talking with Sanji, who's the managing director of a company called Talent HR Solutions, which is a, a PEO that's been in Hawaii for more than 10 years, which is a real accomplishment because it's a very competitive market, uh, and there's some big players in there that can be very aggressive. Uh, but Sanji has made it work uh, primarily by providing some good quality customer service at a very competitive price. And so, you know, Sanji, welcome back. Uh, Thank you. The PEO market really is a professional employer organization. Um, basically, it's it's where a company can go that may have a, a few, you know, employees, you know, maybe twenty or thirty, mm -hmm. up to you know, a higher number even. Uh, but 
they don't want to handle all the back office mm -hmm. and they want to be able to get some competitive benefits mm -hmm. for them and, and what so they can come to you mm -hmm. you can plug them into your system mm -hmm. you can offer the employees all these additional benefits uh, and you can provide all of this back office support um, including all of the payroll compliance issues mm -hmm. um, for sometimes you know less than what they're currently paying for it mm -hmm. if they got in-house staff doing it for them mm -hmm. you know but can you you know elaborate a little bit on that I mean that was my executive summary of it but I'm sure, sure there's much more to it so how do you do what you do what what are you looking for in a customer and, and how does it work oh, okay so typically uh, when we um, meet a new a, a, a prospective client um, we like to create like a personal feel. So, you know, uh, instead of just referring them to our website, we like to talk to them over the phone, see if they're a good fit. That's a good practice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, you know, we're, we're selective in the people that we want to work with. We want to work with, you know, uh, people that generally are, um, you know, they, they see a, a, a benefit in, in outsourcing all of these core functions like payroll, workers' comp, medical, employee relations, et cetera. Um, right. So, and so, once somebody is interested in mm -hmm. exploring this option mm -hmm. and, and to talk to you about mm -hmm. it, I guess they can go to the website mm -hmm. and find out some more information. But they really need to talk to you. Yeah. You, you really need to, to sit mm -hmm. down with them mm -hmm. and explain all the positives and, and mm -hmm. what works, how it works. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I guess they just need to be fully aware. You know, that there's going to be a, a transition period. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but overall, you know, it's going to be positive in, mm -hmm. in a couple different ways. One is that they're going to be relieved of a lot of this responsibility Absolutely. of taking care of this themselves. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, there may be some economies of scale that you mm -hmm. offer that could actually save them a few bucks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what what is the, the perfect type of client that you're looking for? What is that, that model? The perfect type of client is um, a client that has low attrition, um, two employees to about 20 employees. And, okay, so um, two it, to 20 is that sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, in okay. Hawaii, um, a lot, there's a lot. a lot of small businesses like that. Yeah, yep. All right, and so somebody that has mm -hmm. got a company that's been around for mm -hmm. a little while and yeah. they've got two to 20 employees mm -hmm. and they seem to be doing well, mm -hmm. um, but they're frustrated because there's so much of this HR mm -hmm. and payroll stuff they got mm -hmm. to deal with, mm -hmm. then they can talk to you. And, and then once they talk to you, kind of walk us through what happens yeah, next. Yeah, so once, uh, once I meet with them, I, I collect uh, some basic information from them um, and then I put together a, a cost analysis and I, I show them exactly what they're uh, paying in-house versus um, outsourcing it, and a lot of times it's a good exercise uh, for the for the small businesses. And I, I I find out a lot that small businesses sometimes they don't know exactly what their overall cost is. So a lot of times they're like, wow, it's it's this is great great information that I I needed to know. Um, yeah, and it's eye opening. Sometimes. Eye opening. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty and amazing. and sometimes uh, the owner who is so focused on taking care of the customers mm -hmm. and taking care of the product delivery, mm -hmm. uh, they're not always as on top of that back office piece mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. maybe they used to be mm -hmm. when they first started. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how it can get bigger and, and it, you know and have a lot of different moving parts mm -hmm. to it to kind of add up. Yep, absolutely. You yeah. know, and so you can come in, analyze that, look at that, mm -hmm. do a cost comparison, mm -hmm. uh, and then let's assume that Okay, costs, even if the costs are about the same, mm -hmm. freeing the owner up to be able to focus more strategically mm -hmm. on building the business mm -hmm. and taking care of other things and mm -hmm. not back office, there's a value there too, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, we like to um, say that HR is it's not a revenue generating department for a small business. <laughs> so the benefits, um, they, they love it. Um, they enjoy the fact that they're relieved of the burden and you know the, the, the cost sure. too. Um, also because of the fact that we have a lot of clients that have uh, low turnover, our unemployment rate is very competitive. Uh, one of the most competitive than all other PEOs. So um, they, they tend to save um, a lot of money on unemployment insurance. Yeah. Well, and also in retraining. Yep. You Absolutely. know, I think uh, you know one of the biggest challenges in any small business is mm -hmm. finding the right people. Mm -hmm. Once you can find the right people and you've got them working for you, you don't want to let them go. You want to keep things happy mm -hmm. and, and keep it you know fun to come to work and, mm -hmm. and be productive. And I think you know providing a lot of the different benefits that 
you know, a larger PEO mm -hmm. like yourself would have, mm -hmm. um, you know, some good health insurance, some mm -hmm. good life insurance, some mm -hmm. other benefits, mm -hmm. the, the lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, benefits that you were mm -hmm. talking about, all provide some comfort to the employee, mm -hmm. but also it brings an element of, of maybe professionalism mm -hmm. to the process too, because mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you can start looking at things like job descriptions mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe even some incentive mm -hmm. programs, mm -hmm. you know, that might fit in for that company. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those that's the type of talent that you have that you can mm -hmm. share with, with these employees mm -hmm. and employers mm -hmm. to make sure that that environment is really mm -hmm. positive mm -hmm. for the employees. Mm -hmm. you know, do you have examples of that? Have you done that for others before too? Yeah, actually, actually yes. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the, the benefits have been always very positive, right? Very, I mean, very positive. Morale yep. goes yep. up, yep. productivity goes yep. up. Um, you know, it's it's amazing what some attention uh, to the employees can mm -hmm. do to, to make things better for them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, have you got any success stories that you might be able to share? I mean, did a company come to you at some point and just had a real mess and, then, and you were able to step in and, and really just kind of help them out? Yeah, so um, th we, we've had a lot of success stories. and. Um, Part of being successful is my staff. I got one of the best staff. I mean, our employees are what makes our company, and um, it's a very personalized service, and we, we care so much about what we do. Um, but um, an example, like uh, about six months ago, there was a, a company that uh, they were paying all of their uh, people in cash, and you know the labor department was yeah, circling them and I'm know. sure that caught a lot of attention yeah it did yeah so they, they were um, they were really um, really scared you know and um, they, they reached out to us and we were able to um, get them compliant and get them job descriptions set up their workers comp their, get their medical insurance set up and yeah do you have employee manuals that you can work with too or templates for those absolutely yeah. yeah because that's a big that's an important part too yes yep. yeah and so you were able to really bring some mm -hmm. good structure yep. and compliance mm -hmm. to that mess that uh, that came to you mm -hmm. you know um that's that's a, a great accomplishment mm -hmm. and let's um let's just touch on some of the uh, the issues that they might encounter for non-compliance, mm -hmm. because that's part of where some of the, the, the I guess the chaos mm -hmm. is created, is because sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, you can kind of get yourself in a little bit of hot water. Yep. But um, payroll is a, a very compliance-focused process. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, when you're processing mm -hmm. payroll, you're taking a chunk of their pay mm -hmm in the form of taxes, and mm -hmm. you're supposed to be paying this on mm -hmm. to the federal mm -hmm. uh, and state tax organizations. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if, if cash is tight a little bit and you don't quite have that money to do that? You get some compliance issues there, don't you? Yep. You know, and some of the penalties. Yep. Do you, are you familiar with the penalties that they oh might get slapped Oh my gosh, with? yeah, I mean, uh, some of the penalties can be as much as $1,000 a day, and uh, when they hear that, it's, uh, it's really scary. I mean, like sometimes these uh, small businesses, um, they can go on, um, you know, under the radar uh, for a while and paying people cash, but it can eventually catch up and it's Well, it's and not, not, not paying those taxes. Yeah. Actually, the um, Internal Revenue Service can come back to the employer and mm -hmm. say, you know, you've got five or six years of not mm -hmm. paying any of these payroll taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? We don't want to chase mm -hmm. those employees. That's not going to mm -hmm. be our job. Mm -hmm. We're going to charge you for all those back taxes, mm -hmm. and we're going to take that money from you. Mm -hmm. You got to go after mm -hmm. the employees and get mm -hmm. it. You know, that's that's pretty scary. That it can is. basically wipe out a company. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so it's important to stay on top of this mm -hmm. uh, and make sure that you stay compliant with all those different rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got people that, that really know that really well, don't you? Definitely, yep. Yeah. So if anybody that's watching the show out there has mm -hmm. any concerns at all, mm -hmm. then they should probably go to your website and reach mm -hmm. out and make contact with you, and you can help them out a little bit. Yeah, we have a, a really nice introductory video um, that's personalized and kind of tells a little bit about um, what we do and just a little bit about our, our staff and some client testimonials as well. And what is that website address again? It's uh, talenthrsolutions.com. All right, so that's all spelt out. Uh, and you'll go there, and, and I've been there a few times, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in kind of preparation for the show. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's got, like you said, some videos and mm -hmm. some good background information. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's got a lot of useful information. And then there's also a, um, a phone number on there too, right? Yep. 
and that phone number will find its way to you eventually. Absolutely. Yep, three five four zero four nine eight. All right, yep. and and what the one more time? Three five four zero four nine eight. Very good. So if anybody has any type of concerns, and maybe nobody has reached out to them yet, mm -hmm. but if they've got any concerns about whether they're compliant with payroll or they're mm -hmm. uncomfortable with how mm -hmm. things are going, or they just want to take a look and explore maybe mm -hmm. a better way of doing it. Mm -hmm. They can reach out to you either telephonically yep. or through the website, and um, and I've heard rumors that you even answer your own phone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Now, one of the uh, I just want to touch on this briefly, but you know sometimes the way people or companies end up getting into a little bit of, of trouble, mm -hmm. it's not because um, well a disgruntled employee basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they could have a great company, they can be mm -hmm. chunking along real mm -hmm. well and, mm -hmm. and doing what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. um, but maybe they're not totally compliant or maybe they decided, well, you know, we're gonna pay this person on a contractor mm -hmm. basis ver mm -hmm. versus an employee basis, and, and then something can happen. And that person could end up getting hurt in a file for workers' comp. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they don't have a job anymore, there's no mm -hmm. more work to give them, and so they go file for unemployment. Mm -hmm or maybe they just get upset mm -hmm. and go complain. Mm -hmm. But that's usually the way Department of Labor or Department of Taxation or mm -hmm. the IRS finds out about yes. things. It's because of a, an employee mm -hmm. that does something that mm -hmm. brings attention to the mm -hmm. employer. Mm -hmm. um, and the best way to avoid that mm -hmm. is to make sure that you're doing it according mm -hmm. to the rules. Yep. And in Hawaii, they call that deep kimchi, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, and that, that actually that gimchi can get pretty deep and pretty yeah. hot too, you yeah. know, because it's yeah. uh, the penalties. I mean, and the employer penalties for a responsible person comes can occasionally reach a hundred percent of the taxes mm -hmm. due. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have to pay all of the taxes, mm -hmm. maybe for several years, mm -hmm. but then the penalty on top of that mm -hmm. could be another hundred percent. Oh my gosh, yeah, and, and for not covering the employees uh, on medical insurance and workers' comp, is, oh. It just adds up it really adds up, quick. Yeah. Yep. yeah, it's amazing that the, uh, you know, the the the, the stick mm -hmm. that you could get whacked with, or the gimchi you can fall <laughs> into, you know, if you're not compliant. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to wrap up. We've got maybe about twenty or thirty seconds left here. Um, any final words of wisdom you want to leave with the uh, audience today about? Uh, you know, reaching out and talking to you. I mean, you're a friendly guy, right? You're, yeah. you're welcome to come out and talk to them anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if anybody has any questions or concerns, I, I, I definitely would, you know, um, come by and do a complimentary uh, human resource uh, cost analysis. And uh, just um, the, my, the most important, uh, the, the, the favorite thing I like is just learning about what they, uh, you know, what they're going to, what kind of business they're in and what their mission is. Or, Very good. Uh, it's really interesting to learn about that. Very good, Sanjay. Well, thank you for uh, joining me on the show today. We appreciate it. We, we've learned a lot about the PEO and how we can keep people out of trouble. Mm -hmm. um, look forward to having you back again someday in the future. Thank you. All right. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Breaker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30, and we cover uh, topics that are uh, helping small businesses survive in a, a state that can be challenging at times. So until next Thursday, aloha.